Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now, if I say Polaroid camera, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is something that looks like this. Big old plastic box, not very fancy looking. But what if I told you you could be shooting something that looks like this? The Polaroid SX70. Maybe the most beautiful camera to ever exist. So before we get into like the ins and outs of the camera, I'm going to go through what it is mainly known for, and that is the overall design. Now, this is the camera. <laughs> it always makes me laugh and smile when I see it because it's just such a nice looking piece of kit. And it doesn't look like a camera at all. It looks more like a cigarette or cigar box. Um, folds down to pretty much nothing. And this is maybe what you've seen before. Now, the coolest part about this camera is that it folds up and you get this beautiful looking silver body looks like something from the future even though this camera did come out in 1972 73 it's still looking very <laughs> futuristic and just looks like it'd be fun to use and it really is so not to bore you with like the specs of this it has a 116 mil lens that is f8 um the shutter speeds range from 175 up to 10 seconds. So it's quite a wide kind of range of exposure, but you can't control that. The only thing you can control is your focus and your exposure, which is basically just an ND filter that go, like covers the light meter um, to overexpose, underexpose, um, get more light on the film and things like that and that is all real quick on the back of what I was saying about the specs as well just because I forgot to mention it no batteries which is handy the camera is actually powered by the Polaroid cartridge that you put in there so you have to worry about batteries you don't have to worry about charging it or anything like that all you have to do is pop the cartridge inside the front here like that and that cartridge does power the, the camera and the workings of it um, and yeah that just makes life a little bit easier for you and um, it makes it more likely for me to throw it in my bag knowing I'd have to worry about it being out of battery, charging it, things like that um, makes me more, more likely to bring it along. Talking about the results now and what it can make I've been really happy with the results this camera has made. Um, I've not used it as a serious camera. I used it in Madeira. It's just like, oh, this will be cool. Snap that on Polaroid. And I didn't really look too much in my Polaroids until it got to the end of the trip. And my bag was just, I think I shot two, two and a half packs of Polaroid through it whilst I was there in the three days. And just seeing them all together at the end was really nice. Um, I wouldn't really use it as like a serious camera because obviously it's Polaroids. Uh, I'm not I'm not Polaroids. Some people do get really good results from them. For me personally, though, having like other cameras to use to get the results I want, this is just more of a memory camera, which I do know a lot of people use um, them as, especially the more common modern Polaroids like the Instax Mini. This is just to save me buying a plastic um, Instax Mini. And it just looks cool as well. Um, I'll drop some of the results in that I've made with this camera. Uh, some of the Madeira ones especially. They came out really nice. Especially once you scan them in and edited them slightly. Um, I did that with mine. Scan them in and then just drop them into Lightroom to sort them out because... Um, Polaroid results, especially with this camera, can be a little bit inconsistent just because of how I think it meters the light. If there's like any obstructing light or just random light coming in, like you wouldn't be able to shoot this face in the sun, is what I'm trying to say, because it would just be blown out. Um, you have to really, really um, 
be in control of where you're pointing this thing and be ready for the longer exposure. It's happened to me a few times where I've shot it not expecting the exposure to be two seconds. Um, one of them was once and I shot and I, knew, I was like oh because the exposure was lasting a lot longer than I thought and you don't get any pre-warning to that. Sometimes it'll be instant, you'll pull the Polaroid out, other times you press the button, you can hear it fire and then you're just waiting until it feeds you that Polaroid. Now something I would recommend if you pick one of these up and start using it is to meter. Like I never thought about metering for Polaroids until I'd gone through quite a few packs. But as soon as I started metering, especially for the Madeira stuff that I was shooting, I'm knowing like, oh it's F8, 600 speed film, like it's definitely going to be um, that a higher shutter speed. The results were a lot more um, reliable um, compared to when I was just like, oh, this will be good for a Polaroid, boom, and yeah. Now, like I said, I'll just drop some of them results in now, um, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the flash that you guys can get for this. So like I said, you can get a flash for this. Now this is the flash, it's by a company called Mint. Um, that is what the flash looks like. It's just a little flash bar, pretty sure it's called flash bar. And it quite just simply just connects to the top of the camera like that. And I wouldn't keep it, I don't keep it on there, just because I'd be scared of like, I mean, look at that. Like I'd be scared of that snapping off. So I keep it in its own little box, but it just sits on the top there. Obviously when you pull this up, it's on there, it's not in the way or anything like that. And it's not too intrusive, like once the camera is open, because it's like in line with that, it doesn't look stupid. Um, and it does work, it is quite strong, quite powerful. It's powered by batteries, um, it's not powered by the cartridge, like the camera. Um, and yeah, it does work really well. Now, if you're lucky to get one of these flashes, which is in like decent condition, or with the box, they do come with gels, which, can't see, just magnet onto the front there, like that. And it is a really, really powerful flash. I'll just turn it on that real quick, and flash you guys once it's warmed up. Oh, okay, it's ready, ready, three, two, boom. Nice, nice and bright, especially when you got the gels on. You can get a nice colour cast from it as well. Um, and I do enjoy using it, um, especially with the lens being f8 and the speed being, or the fastest shutter speed being, well, 175. The flash does come in handy in like them lower light indoor scenarios, just like you would have it on this. This camera, the more modern versions of this, they just know when to use the flash and will flash unless you manually turn it off. Where is this? You'd have to manually put the flash on there if you wanted to use it. That then was some of the Polaroids I shot in Madeira. Now do bear in mind that I did go over them in Lightroom slightly just to balance them out and correct the exposures. But overall, just looking back at them here, they are so sharp. Like, that is such a sharp image and I remember getting looking at some of these back and just loving them like there's one here of the um, the beach club which I honestly love it's up there with one of my favorite images I've ever taken as well as this one here with the ferns looking out over the ocean like they are so sharp um, and I was I remember looking at them at the end of the trip and being blown away now before we do leave today I'm gonna to ask the question if anyone knows how I can archive these I'd be very grateful on finding out because I just keep mine in wads which does take up a lot of room um, in my drawers and things like that so if you know how to archive these, 
please let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe. You can follow me over on my Instagram. I'll drop the link for that down in the caption of the video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.